there's two videos about this particular integral. In this video, we're going to look at all of the wrong or suboptimal ways to tackle the problem. And then in the next video, we're actually going to solve the integral. So just pause the video to try and think how you would solve this using complex contour integration. And more specifically, I would like you to think about these particular contours and try and identify why they're not such a good approach for this particular exercise. So I suggest let's get to work and uh, pause the video. So as usual, when we're dealing with complex contour integration, there's two questions we need to answer. So the first question is, what is the complex function that we need to consider? So what is the best choice of f of z? Now, in this case, you might think, well, since we have sinus x divided by x, why don't we use just sinus z divided by z? That's a very straightforward, logical thing to do. The problem here in this case um, is that this sinus of z, that's exponential j z minus exponential minus minus j struggling here with the controls divided by 2 j z. Now um, here we're in a little bit of a problem because if we look at these exponentials they have different signs in their exponents. So this means that the conditions to close the contour either in the upper half plane or in the lower half plane will be different when we apply Jordan's lemma. So if we go this route, we would need to split the integral into two integrals and then solve each integral separately. That's of course not very efficient, so let's not, uh, not do that. Another thing you might consider is, well, you look back at the, the course notes and then you see there there's a technique where we replace sine of, of theta by z, 1 over z divided by, by 2j. And then you might be tempted to try this technique in this particular case. That would be extremely unfortunate because that's a technique that's suited for when your theta values run from 0 to 2 pi, so when you have something on the unit circle. In our case, we have the integral from 0 to infinity, so that's a completely different technique which is not suited here. So please don't fall into that uh, particular trap. What would be a good idea was to say, okay, uh, let's just split up these two terms from the start and let's only consider one. Let's have a look at exponential jz divided by, uh, by z. And then if we take this integral here and if we evaluate it on the real axis, if we do it on the, the real axis, then we get exponential jx divided by x. And if we then take the imaginary part, because exponential jx is cosine plus j sine, Taking the imaginary part brings us to sine x over x. And this is what we're interested in. So it's much more efficient to only have this particular term here, evaluate it on the real axis, and then take the, uh, the imaginary part. Okay, so that sounds like an approach. We have a complex function f of z to tackle this. Next step is looking at the, the contour that we're going to use here. So the first contour I suggested goes something like this. So um, it's a contour here in the, the right half plane. The problem is that in this case, there's nothing along the real axis. And we did want to evaluate this along the real axis. Here we have line segments on the imaginary axis. Now on the imaginary axis, we have that exponential jz then becomes exponential j, jy, which is this guy over here, which has nothing to do with our sign. So that's, that's a bad idea because that does not teach us anything about the integral that we're interested in. Next suggestion, the unit circle. The unit circle has the same problem. There's no contribution here from the positive real axis, which is what we're interested in. So you can solve this integral, but it will not teach you anything about uh, the real value of the integral. So let's throw this one out of the window as well. And let's have a look at this creative solution here. So we have a semicircle centered at r over 2. And then we take the limit of r going towards infinity. And then this line here will just be the uh, positive real axis. So that sounds promising. 
The only issue is that we do not have a limit theorem to deal with the circular segment that goes towards infinity in radius, but that also moves uh, along the horizontal axis. So we do not really have the tools to, to deal with that. So let's abandon this approach and let's look at an integral at a, at a, at a contour like this. Now that's already a lot better. We have our positive real axis here, but then we also have the imaginary axis. So we would separately need to deal with that. We would separately need to calculate that contribution and then eliminate that from the whole contour integral. So I'm not saying this is impossible, but it's a lot of extra work and we do not like a lot of extra work, right? So we would like to be uh, efficient. Good. Um, different approach. Why don't we then have a contour like this? So where we close in the bottom half plane. Good news is that we have the real axis. The bad news is that we close in the bottom half plane and that's the wrong half plane for Jordan's lemma. Because for Jordan's lemma, we need to have this construction here where we figure out, depending on the sign of the exponent, where we should close the contour. And this is not where you should close the contour. So Jordan's lemma will not be able to, to apply it in this case. Let's then close it in the upper half plane. Okay, now we're slowly getting there. The only problem is that if you look at our integral, that something is going wrong at the origin. There's a singularity at the origin. But you say, wait a minute, singularity at the origin. We know that the limit of sine x divided by x, yeah, that's just one, so that, that's well defined. Um, so why do we have a problem here? Well, the problem is that we're not looking only at sine x over x. We're looking at this complex valued function, exponential jz divided by z. And that also contains the cosine part in addition to the sine part. So this, this whole function is indeed still, still singular. And if you're not convinced, just write down the Laurent series. The Laurent series will tell you that this is equal to this expression over here. And there you can clearly see that we do have indeed a term 1 over z in the Laurent series. And moreover, you can easily calculate that uh, the residue there is equal to, to 1. So that's not a good idea because we drive our contour straight through the singularity and that will not work. Let's try this approach. Also very creative, so we, we circle around the origin so that we do not have to deal with the singularity there. We have our positive real axis and we close it here and then we also take the limit of uh, this end point here going towards infinity. That's very creative and clever because it seems we've avoided the problem of the singularity here. We also only have the positive real axis. The, the issue is if you start working this thing out and if you need to look at the contributions of the different parts of the, 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 the contour, um, that in this case the contribution from the top line here will just cancel the one from the bottom line. So if you do all of your hard work, the stuff that you're interested in, namely the part at the top here, that will just have vanished because it has also this, this part at the bottom here because of the continuity. So, interesting creative approach, but unfortunately not very successful. Okay, trying something else here. So, we know we need to avoid the singularity at the origin. We know we need to close the contour in the upper half plane. Let's just avoid the singularity like this. Um, could work in theory will also work in practice. The, the only thing is that it's perhaps not extremely efficient because if we close it here in the lower half plane, that means that now our singularity is inside the contour. And then we need to calculate the residue and that's a lot of work. Uh, actually, we've done it here, it, it's one, okay, but it, it's extra work in any case. So it might be more efficient if we just close the contour, this little contour here in the upper half plane, then we have zero singularities inside the contour and we do not need to worry about calculating residues. Final option for a contour is doing something like this. We avoid the singularity in the upper half plane. 
and we have a square contour here, which is perhaps a bit more aesthetic than this round contour. The issue is that we do not have a limiting theorem to deal with uh, this here, with this shape. We only have limiting theorems to deal with circular shapes. So you would need to do a lot of extra work to deal with this yourself. So again, not impossible, but requires some, uh, some extra work. So the most promising option is to have a variation on this thing here, where we close in the upper half plane. Okay, so now that we know all of the things that are not so promising to tackle this integral, in the next video we will take the, the, the most optimal approach and then actually do residue calculus to derive the, the final result.